that me? Um, no, that's yeah. The, well, that's your phone going off there. I'm gonna uncheck you because I don't need you. Don't you uncheck me? I'm unchecking you, buddy. I don't need you on this call. No, actually, I can't wait till he reams you a new one for not uh <sighs> for not uh. Breathe. Breathe. Let's see. <laughs> What Johnny is referring to is, um, oh, jeez. <laughs> is, is, is that uh, Eric getting ready to eat you alive? Yes. That's our appetite. Ooh, turn it down. That's <laughs> our appetite. That's, that's everybody's appetite in January? Yes, sir. That's everybody's <laughs> appetite 12 months out of the year. Well, how are you doing, man? What's the uh, temperature there in New York where you're at? Uh, I think Can we we're, guess? we're at a warm... 14 degrees 14. so you know funny we talk about that uh you know as you guys talk about oh it's cold and things are going on there but um we uh we've been at like negative temperatures and the other day i went into the gym and it was negative eight degrees and i came out about lunch to go to lunch and uh it was 20 degrees and it actually came out of my mouth i said it warmed up to 20 degrees and i couldn't believe <laughs> i would ever say that in my life that it warmed up to 20 degrees hey, so are, are you a florida to get some crazy wind chill of like negative 30 tomorrow it's gonna be pretty awesome are you a florida boy originally yeah born and oh. raised in miami dude it's 35 here today it was 35 this morning when when i woke up can you That's believe that awesome that is like bone chilling though right isn't it it actually, I, I don't know, I maybe because I just, you know, I was hustling and I was warm because I was just, you know, trying to get out the door and just jumped out of the shower, all that stuff. It wasn't, it was really nice. I actually am getting kind of used to it. You know, day one, <laughs> I thought I was going to die, but I'm kind of used yeah. to it. Now. Well, I thought it was going to be brutal. Like I was ready for like three layers. I didn't even throw my jacket on. Nice. Get a little bubble vest and you're good to go. Yeah, man. So what kind of workouts do you have people do when it's 14 degrees? <laughs> Well, uh, I'm not at the facility right now. I was there early this morning, but, you know, we're blessed to have a 90,000 square foot facility that our gym's a part of. So you saw a couple of weeks ago I was in the gym and we got about 4,000 square feet. That is our actual training area. But then it is a full indoor complex. So there's a full soccer field. I'll actually have to do one next week from there. I mean, this place is amazing. It's got a huge indoor track upstairs that's like a sixth of a mile. So it's got almost... 300 meters around it's a pretty good clip i mean if you ever taken a lap you know you're playing soccer football hey lap around the field it's not that short so you know you get that uh that field it's got basketball courts batting cages pitching cages so it's pretty holy cow it's pretty uh uh well, pretty awesome but you know it's it's a need up here when you have uh you know this this kind of temperatures and this kind of uh snow and uh you got to still train all year long but i'm blessed to be a part of like the premier facility in central, you know, New York. I almost said Central Florida. Wow. Well, well, next <laughs> next month, you guys. Because I know you just opened the facility, so next month when you come on, we'll ask you about your heating bill in January. Well, it's good because it's part of the whole building, so I don't have to worry about that, which is good. So, Holy crap! Uh, good for you, you man. Know, get get to luck out with that. All right, so it's the beginning of the year. Um, you and I have been talking on the show for the past uh, five six weeks, um, getting people like me and everybody else geared up. Uh, to start their diet in January. Yep. So what are the conversations you've been happening or having this week uh, with uh, your clients? Well, you know, it, it's uh, the theme we've talked about the last few weeks is consistently average, always Trump seldom perfection. So everybody comes in geared up, really motivated. And if I ask them to say, hey, you're only going to have chicken and rice or chicken and broccoli every meal for the next three weeks, they're like, no problem. I like that. That's fine. Whatever I need to do, because they're willing to take that step. But what I tell them to do is take that step back and realize that this is a lifelong program. I want to put you in, not something that's going to be just over the next few weeks. We're not doing a six week challenge. It's not a four week challenge. You're not getting a hundred thousand dollars. If you lose a hundred pounds in, you know, two months, we're trying to just get our life back and become healthier. So let's just eat the foods we like and eat the amounts we're supposed to eat and just cons consistently do well every day, not do perfect, because then when we fall short of perfect, what do we do? We go, oh, I'll start Monday and it's only Tuesday and you know, I'll, you know, I'm not gonna work out today or I don't need to worry about what I'm eating. If you have a bad meal, no big deal, you're right back on the wagon the next meal. Well, that's the problem, right, is, is uh, with, uh, with a lot of these programs is, is that they try to change the way you eat to an extent that that's, 
it's it's not sustainable right you wouldn't you wouldn't continue to eat that way uh for the remainder of your life uh and so i mean to me that just makes complete sense to simply modify what you already eat and uh, you know to to again get you to where you want to be exactly because you see a lot of the programs where you got to buy their meals or you just drink their shakes or have their bars yeah or you just severely limit what you're doing and how long can you maintain that is it even affordable but do you like eating that you'd rather just eat normal foods you know you want to if you're going through a drive through you go out to lunch with your friends you don't want to go oh i brought my lunch in my purse you know and you're you know you want to know that you're able to conduct yourself on a normal basis but yeah you're hitting the nail on the head that we want to get people to conduct themselves as they would for the rest of their life we're not doing any short term you know blast program that's just going to you know erratically change all of their habits well because also if once you fall off the wagon off of that chicken and rice deal or smoothies or whatever it is you know then it's it's almost like you've gone to the complete opposite end uh of the spectrum uh because then you go back to eating normal foods and and your body just you know is is trying to keep up with you Exactly, exactly. And that's where the, uh, you know, eating the normal foods and going to your normal refrigerator and having your normal shopping, going to a regular store to, to shop or regular restaurants to eat allows us to keep people consistent with the program. Uh -oh. But then it also allows us to have that benefit. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, we're just getting a little buzz in your audio. Yeah, it's sounding oh, a little uh, funny right now. Let me let me ask you a question. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yesterday, I, I used my new Instapot, my new Instapot for the first time. Nice. So it's a crock pot, pressure cooker, ricer, yogurter, whatever that is. I was, is it worth buying it? I was looking at that. I wasn't sure. All right. So according to all the due diligence that we did, um, the reviews are basically this. It is fantastic. You have to get okay. to know it, though. It's not like just having a regular old, uh, crock pot. You have to get, you have to learn it a little bit. But once you get okay. some of the buttons down, then it is supposed to be like amazing. But my question is this, because, you know, we threw, I, I cooked some chicken in it, very simple. And I made sure that I had extra chicken in there so that I have stuff for lunch for the next couple of days. How, how much do you focus on food prep when you're trying to help people get, uh, get in shape or change their lifestyle? Well, we know just from basic, you know, eating out and, and preparing it ourselves. When you prepare it yourself, you know what's in it, right? And uh, you're always going to have a healthier choice when you food prep. But something like what you're doing, it's awesome that you have that sort of uh, cooking, you know, available to you. And, and again, you know, I got to jump on and uh, go to Amazon and grab one myself now. But because when you do a pressure cooker, I used to do one like the old school one, and it just took way longer than I expected. But you're going to be able to change the flavor, but then make a lot more. Like if you made two pounds or three pounds of chicken breast, that's something you can keep going back to for a couple of days. It's not, oh, we made dinner. It was great. But then what am I going to do? Is it McDonald's for breakfast the next morning? And what am I going to do for lunch? You've got something that you can do chicken tacos with, something that you're going to do chicken salad with, something you're going to do chicken and sweet potatoes with. So it, it gives you that uh, benefit to, to uh, really help yourself out the more you food prep. And just like we're talking about uh, with the chicken, if it's sweet potatoes, if it's broccoli, if it's any of that, the more you can prep in bulk, it does two things. It gives you options, but then it's prepared. You're not trying to prep every single meal Every, you know, four to four to ten meals after that prep, it's just go to the micro, you know, go to the uh, refrigerator, take out your Tupperware, throw it in the microwave, and you're eating. Now, you were saying earlier that you're not a big fan of these uh, diets to get people kind of moving forward. You know, like a, you know, a one month purge or your a challenge. You know, one of those kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of challenges and and bringing people to light of putting it together like we have a few corporate programs that uh, we did a lot of corporate wellness in the Tampa area, you know, while I was had my time down there and uh, bringing that up here. And we love to do challenges with like teams. So if we're going with a company that has about a thousand employees close to us and we're doing teams of five. So if we can do a weight loss challenge with them over the next six to eight weeks, we're deciding the time frame. I'm okay with that, but still going under the same parameters as I'm going to do with you guys like I'm doing that let's eat normal foods let's do it but they're going to be a little bit more 
focused on I'm going to prep, I'm going to do this, I'm not just going to eat whatever because they're going to go from day one because there's a little bit more skin in the game with it. But, but yes, the challenges I like, it's just not the extreme challenge. I don't want to go, well, can you lose 25 or 30 pounds this month? You know, if somebody had 200 pounds to lose, that might be okay, but most folks don't have that much to lose. So it's really letting that weight tick off, you know, one to four pounds. Uh, we'll see, depending on somebody's weight loss, a week, and that's something that can stay off permanently. You've got that extreme weight loss, and you're seeing these people lose 10, 12, 15 pounds a week. Well, that's something that's going to extremely go back. You know, unfortunately, you see that with even the biggest loser stuff. When you look up the people that won or did well on the show, they're right back to where they were. They don't have, you know, Jillian or Bob or whatever screaming in their face uh, every day and have doctors preparing their – doctors and chefs preparing their food and – you know, we want to make sure that you guys are, are totally in the loop on what you're eating, how you're doing it. But again, once that challenge is over, once you hit your goal, you can maintain it. It's not like what next. Um, all right, man. Well, let's get uh, all these questions that I've been asking you was basically to uh, distract you from the fact that I haven't been loading in my food myself and nor did I remember to get on the oh, scales. I know this because I have your login. I check what you guys are doing. <laughs> That's why you got that text on Tuesday. Both of you, it's like, hey, it's Happy New Year. You know, uh, you haven't logged anything this year yet. Let's start logging so yep. we can uh, get that going. Because right. there's, you know, that's that's where uh, we can't lie to ourselves when we're logging our nutrition because then we know exactly what we're eating. We're not doing the zombie program where we just eat whatever and hope for the best. Did you happen to see the uh, the link that I sent you about the 30 worst diets out there, the keto diet, the, this diet, the, that diet? I went through a handful of them. I didn't get to get through all 30. What was your favorite? Well, I mean, what, what, are, what are your thoughts on uh, some of the uh, things that they, you know, uh, uh, you know, some of those diets that they put up there, including the so, keto diet? That's something that I really like to emphasize with our program is that I've done all of them myself personally, as well as with clients and to see what really works. I mean, there's keto and paleo and South Beach and intermittent fasting and all these other things. And being able to dabble in all of them, I've taken something from each one of them. But just to go back to where we are with normal eating, we, you know, just like the shakes in the bars or the, the meetings or just points is that. The issue is, is can you maintain that after you get to your goal or after you do the four, six, or eight-week program? That's where the issue becomes. If you're ketogenic, for instance, when you're doing like low to no carbohydrates, can you maintain that the rest of your life? Or if you're going, you know, uh, South Beach and you're saying, I'm going to take everything white out of my diet, you know, are you never going to eat anything white again? You know, and that's where I want to go you know, that step back and make it that consistently average, not seldom perfection, that you're eating a certain amount of protein, fat, and carbs, and I give you the, the spectrum of foods of what you like to get those protein, fat, and carbs from, and then as we get to know each other as coach and client, we can see if your body's reactive to certain foods. Like if I know that, you know, we're seeing issues, the more dairy you have, then we'll pull that yogurt and milk and cheese out of your diet. Um, if you're reactive to grains and there's something or with gluten, then we can look at that. But that's down the line. It takes, you know, weeks and months to find those things out instead of just pulling it all out and trying to do that extreme thing. But on the other hand, I'm, I'm okay if somebody's like, well, I want to do uh, a three-day water fast because I want to detox my body. That's fine because that's something you're going to do once, two, maybe three times a year. But that's not something you're going to go every week. I'm going to do a three-day water fast. That's just not something that – uh uh, is sustainable. Wait, that's something I should be doing is a, a, a three day water fast a couple times in a year. Absolutely. It's oh. awesome. Hmm. I start people out with 24 hours to start, you know, just to get, it's more a mental prep than it is a physical prep because your body can survive well after three days without food. It's just mentally getting that stimulation, your blood sugar, but you will regulate your blood sugar. You will regulate, uh, the kid, uh, kidney liver function. Uh, it, it's amazing what happens when you take food out of your body and give your digestive system because, you know, your health's really in your gut, that, that intestine, you know, that, that tract is, is overlooked so much. And you might always hear about gut health or healthy gut or probiotics or, you know, everything you see, there's a lot of truth to that. So if we can give your body a rest, so, you know, we'll try that here in the next, uh, 
uh, week before the show and have you guys do a 24-hour water fast and see how you felt from it. Uh, well, uh, you know, we appreciate you coming on the show every single week and talking nutrition uh, with us. And we know this isn't just about me. This is about everybody else yes. who's uh, watching the Absolutely. show. And, um, and last week I was out and somebody who watches the show every single day thanked me for having you on every single day and oh, nice. said, I guess they had their, that my, is it my personal, what is it again? My fitness pal, <laughs> my fitness pal. <laughs> That's they, not good. And they said that they, I they, think it's your, my fitness acquaintance right now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will be pals. Soon, I hope. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but I guess it's a, something that he had downloaded a while back, you know, started and started to do it and then just let it fall by the wayside. But once we started, to, you know, having you on the show, he fired that back up. So I know this is uh, helping at least one person that's watching the show every Excellent. day. Excellent. No, I, that's awesome to hear. And, you know, going back to what we just talked about with that challenge, if it's him, if it's any of your viewers, I challenge everybody, do 24 hours, just water. Like literally, hmm. if, if it's tonight and you start and you eat dinner at 8 o'clock, when you're done eating, if it's 8.15, then, or if it's 8.05, depending on how fast you eat, then just go, okay, well, from until 8.05 tomorrow night, I'm just going to have water. And you'd be surprised if you're drinking a lot of water, how, how it satiates that hunger feeling, not that you don't want to chew food or, you know, you might have that. And it's literally no coffee, no juice, no nothing but water. So having a gallon wow. of water with you, go to Publix and spend <laughs> the 65 cents on spring water. And wait, 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 wait. No coffee in that 24 hours? Ooh. Yes, sir. We're going to do I don't know you could do that, Fish. Holy crap. I could do it. I don't know you could do it. I don't know. Oh, well, if it's the weekend, maybe I could do it, but not not uh, coming in here. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there was one last thing. Oh, by the way, this is the last week uh, that you'll be talking to Johnny Torres. He is uh, uh, taking On the show. Away. On the show. Or on the show. I just sent him a Facebook friend request. So Aww. if I'm fortunate enough to get it accepted, you know, then... Uh, you, you, who knows where this will go? We'll look into that. Well, because you know, I've I've been I've told Fish of this off the air. There's a buddy of mine, Anthony Gonzalez. He's a, a very uh, popular, well liked attorney uh, in the West Tampa area, uh, and he is, uh, I guess, uh, always been a big boxing aficionado. He loves boxing and that sort of thing, and so he opened a boxing gym on the first floor of his law practice. <laughs> um, and and it's cool, like, and so he opened a boxing gym, and so they open first thing in the morning, and then they have classes in the afternoon, and so basically he just comes down and then runs, uh, you know, these cardio class, uh, boxing classes. That's something. And I, I, I so that that intrigues well? me. That intrigues me. I'm sorry. So he teaches it as well. He teaches. He I, I, I think he teaches some of it. You know, obviously, yeah. you know, he's got a lot of responsibilities there. But, yeah. uh, but he does. Uh, he, I think he does teach some of the classes himself. Yeah. Hey, but nice. I did. I did have one win. I do have one win. I do have one win. Uh, right. And that is my my Wednesday night gig out at uh, Park and Rec. It's a karaoke night, eight to midnight, four right. hours. That's a long night uh, for me to be on. Right on B Fisher. And so it's a, it's it's four beers or four shots of Jameson, you know, while I'm there. But uh, I decided in January that I was going to give up one of two things as I, you know, mentally get myself right. And it's, it was either going to be Diet Coke or okay. alcohol for the month of January. And there was no way in hell that I could give up Diet Coke. I, if, if <laughs> oh, I'm addicted to... I was to... hoping you were going to say Diet Coke. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> right in that scenario, it's right? It's worse for you. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't the Diet Coke worse than the alcohol? It is. It is so terrible for you. I mean, it's... You know, and we'll, we'll go down a little rabbit hole here, and I'm glad you brought that up for, you know, your Sorry. viewers or people that are going to see this uh, recorded or people alcohol. that are you know, referring alcohol. back to it is that Diet Coke, even though you look at it and you go, okay, it's got zero calories, no sugar, it's awesome. You know, the problem is, is like, what does your body do with that toxic material that you're putting in? Because it's not any real actual nutrients. It, it's almost like consuming plastic. So if I gave you a plastic bottle to eat, how many calories is in that plastic bottle? Mm. Zero, right? We can agree that there's probably no calories in that bottle. But also no new. But has it been buffaloed so, and fried? Because if so, I'll eat that piece of plastic. Plastic. <laughs> okay, hey, you know we're, we'll put a little ranch on it because I can eat anything with ranch. Uh, I'm I'm there with you. So, but it, you know, you eat that plastic bottle or melt it and have a you know mm. have a swig of it. Our body now <laughs> senses that toxic 
environment and it'll actually start to try to process those things because it can't digest it right. it actually stores it in fat cells that's one of the other benefits of a, what a fat cell does for us it's not only stored energy but that's where it also stores toxic toxic material in your body so that's where detoxing your body helps your people to lose weight and that's where we get into like the third fourth you know fifth sixth week in a nutrition journey is starting to do some sort of detox that your body can start to release those toxins because once your body releases those toxins fat just falls off because uh, it doesn't need to be in that you know catch-all safety mode to to maintain that fat to protect against the toxin that's in that fat cell all right so january um no alcohol <laughs> that, that's that'll help that you know i'm going to drop a couple yeah. lbs just because I, like I drink that. like absolutely yeah because i drink like three four times a week um, so that's going to help. And then if I can pull that off, which by the way, man, I'm t it is not easy to make it through a night like last night without drinking and yeah. uh, without a little help. And um, but I did and I got home and I felt great. Granted, I had to be up in three hours, so I feel crappy now, but I would have felt <laughs> worse had I drank last night. So make it through nice. January and the alcohol thing come February. We'll put we'll put Diet Coke in the crosshairs. All right. And, and, you know, again, we talk about consistently average. I just want you to put this on the back burner. When you go to Diet Coke, let's just cut 25 or 30% of your consumption per week. And then the next week, we'll go down to 50%. The next week, we go down to 75 I'll tell you what. That I, way, you're just I, it off. I cut soda completely at one point, And I'd say within a couple of weeks, I dropped, like, almost 10 pounds. Yeah. Like, well, maybe not two weeks. But after a while, like, I, I was dropping weight so quick once I'd cut soda out and and again it's like you were saying about the food Eric you know when you change behavior abruptly like that it's it's hard to to maintain that right so you want to do it to to a point that's sustainable uh, but but I saw the the benefits of just cutting out soda and and it's pretty dramatic it's it's amazing all right it's so a comment before we get you off here from Elliot uh, talking about one of these diets that we were <laughs> Elliot says the paleo diet uh, the cavemen did the paleo diet, and they all lived to the ripe old age of 18. <laughs> <laughs> because they had T-Rexes chasing uh, them. Yeah. That's what it was. All right, Eric, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for having me on, Johnny. It was great working with you. I look forward to uh, chatting with you uh, and keeping this dialogue going with you. Same here. Thank you so much uh, for all your guidance, man. I'm really looking forward all right, to happy it. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year you. to you. Yep. We'll see you.